Hello everyone. <coughs> Hope you all are good. Um, after the long time, we are meeting the topic of free vibration. So, as I discussed earlier, free vibration is nothing but by giving some external moment to start the vibration. And after that, the vibration or the displacement will continue by its own natural frequency. That is what we call free vibration. So, in this session, we are just going to see about what is free vibration, what are the types of free vibration, and what is the methods or name the different methods to determine the natural frequency of the given system. That is Newton's method, second one is equilibrium, third one is nothing but energy method and radix method okay so the objective just a minute please the objective of this topic after the end of the session you people come to know about the principle of d alumbus and what is the role of d alumbus principle in the free vibration and you come to know about newton's second law and also the law of conservation of energy which is make and buy potential and the kinetic energy that can be applied during the vibrations. So before you enter into this free vibration frequency analysis method we just need to recap the previous session as we all studied that uh, frequency is nothing but our vibration is to and fro motion. Vibration is to and fro motion which can be produced either by using the external force or either by applying the natural force. Okay, example, if I going to operate the simple pendulum. The simple pendulum only for initial force, the simple pendulum get oscillates to vibrate. In case, if you take the forced vibration, electric bell is a very good example for the forced vibration. Due to the long pressing of the bell switch, the bell ring continuously get vibrated. So that is a very good example for forced vibration. Damped vibration means to in order to bring the vibrational frequency from maximum level to zero. So that is the that is the meaning of damped. Damped means you simply going to reduce the vibration from the maximum to zero. Okay, this is what we called damped vibrations. So, the vibration can be based upon two laws. Number one is called Hooke's law and number second law is nothing but D. Alambert's principle. In Hooke's law is nothing but when the force is given to the spring, the spring is either stretched or unstretched due to the mass suspended by the object. Okay. So, the displacement takes place in the concerned spring mass damper system it is based upon Hooke's law. So, how it can relate it to D. Alambert's principle? D. Alambert's principle is nothing but the sum of inertia forces produced by the body plus sum of the external forces applying to the body which would be equal to zero. The same as per the law of conservation of the energy, potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to zero. Instead of energy, I just going to replace the board as an elastic force or inertia force plus external force is equal to zero. So, the basic components of any vibrating system that we have to read is spring, mass, 
and damper. Okay, so let me see the derivation of free vibrations. So in this session, the major agenda that we have to learn is types of free vibration. Types of free vibration it can be classified into three types. Number one, longitudinal. Number two, transverse. And number three is nothing but torsional. Longitudinal is nothing but the vibration takes place in the same axis of the force applying. Which means the vibration takes place in the parallel to the axis. Suppose if you take the transverse, the vibration takes place perpendicular to the axis of the sap. In case of longitudinal, the vibration takes place in parallel to the axis. In terms of transverse, the vibration takes place perpendicular to the axis. Torsional vibration is nothing but it can be vibrated due to the high speed rotation. Okay, so let me see the difference between first two types of longitudinal and the transverse in this video. In a longitudinal wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is along the direction in which the wave travels. Longitudinal waves are also referred to as compression waves. In a transverse wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. Hope you guys understand about the difference between longitudinal and the transverse vibration. Okay. So, first of all, let me see the importance. What is the importance of studying this vibration? So, what are the things to know are things to remember before we going to find the natural frequency of vibration and how it can be relevant to the Hooke's law and the D. Alambert's principle. So the importance to studying about this topic is whether the system it can be either statically equilibrium or dynamically equilibrium we need to analyze this first one. So, if the object, if you're going to say it is a static equilibrium, means it should obey the energy law. It's nothing but potential energy plus kinetic energy, which should be equal to the zero. In terms, if the body is in rest, means the law of conservation of the energy played in the role. Suppose. If the body is in dynamic equilibrium or when it is subjected to vibration, we have to remember the law of D. Alambert's principle. Here, in this image, you have seen potential energy. We know the formula potential energy is equal to half into kx square. Kinetic energy is equal to half into mv square. Inertia of force is nothing but it is simply opposite direction to the accelerating force or the given force or the applying force. Okay. Simple harmonic motion equation you know about x is equal to x into capital X refers to maximum displacement whereas omega is nothing but there is some natural circular frequency. Omega is natural circular frequency. F is nothing but natural frequency. Okay. So, how it can be, this topic can be relevant along with this law. As I said, in order to get the body in static equilibrium, the spring you have to consider without mass and by giving the external force in the third category. Now, in this diagram, we have seen the spring is without mass. Because, uh, without mass means there is no stretching takes place. So, by hanging mass, the spring gets displaced some distance. That is what we call it is referred as an X. Now, by giving some externally applying force, that is what we call accelerating force. Hence, the spring is displaced one more time. It can be referred as an 2X. 
okay therefore in this all three diagram first diagram refers to static equilibrium because of the unstitched portion of the mass second one is nothing but the potential energy and the kinetic energy law of conservation of energy in the second diagram it plays the major role and in third diagram you you have to see the difference of dlx principle okay so before we enter into the topic or before we going to find out the frequency value that potential energy which should be equal to the kinetic energy accelerating force is equal to inertia plus that is restoring force what we call and number third one inertia force can be depends upon stiffness so depends upon the mass the inertia force getting varied suppose if you go going to consider the mass m is equal to 10 kg or if you going to consider the mass m is equal to 5 kg so by giving some external force the mass i am going to push the mass by uh, by the same man for both the mass objects means for the 10 kg mass it can um, it can express the high level of inertia in case if you take the 5 kg mass means it can be easily moved by using the less value of inertia therefore the amount of inertia of the mass can be depends upon value of the mass or stiffness of the body so the additional deflection takes place only by because of the external force so now let me see since our topic is an vibration generally the speed can be referred in terms of rpm or referred in terms of rotations per minute but in case of vibration it can be expressed in terms of cycles that is nothing but number of cycles per minute or otherwise it to be as in frequency even if you take a real time example earthquake can be recorded in terms of frequency value based upon that the vibration levels can be measured in terms of either it can be 6.1 either it is in safe zone or unsafe zone it can be determined by using the number of cycles so the natural frequency is nothing but number of cycles per minute that you know <coughs> okay so to determine the natural frequency of the given system <coughs> we have the formula f not is equal to frequency f is equal to 1 by 2 pi into root of k by m where k is nothing but stiffness m is nothing but mass and 2 pi is nothing but the number of revolution or otherwise it can takes the 360 degree of the rotation okay here you compare this two diagram hope you have, hope you this clearly visible to you if you take this two diagram the first diagram have more denser than second diagram so in the first diagram due to the more density the cycles formed in the case in the case of first one will be very high which means the due to the high stiffness the maximum value of cycles that you have seen now if you coming to the second diagram the frequency value will be like flop okay it just going to be reduced by increasing and decreasing but not maintaining at the constant level therefore the range of consistent cycle or the range of inconsistent cycle it can depends upon the stiffness of the given object okay so that is what here that i mentioned yes stiffer spring increases the natural frequency and the less softer spring decreases the natural frequency and coming to this category here by increasing the mass in this case you have seen the rod comparison whereas in this case you have seen like a mass comparison in the small mass can make the huge amount of vibration but here 
the large gas can make the vibration in terms of uneven condition therefore based upon the mass for the given length what kind of mass we have that is very very important the rod mass and the mass of the ball should be matched one so that the consistent vibration will be produced suppose the rod size instead of compare the rod size the mass value gets increased means therefore it can make the uneven vibrations so whether we going to study about or before we going to start the study about uh, frequencies of different vibrations we have to know what are the principles which govern the vibrations or to frame the vibration modeling equation the first one is nothing but law of conservation of energy as you know law of conservation of energy is nothing but energy can neither be created nor be destroyed right at the same time there is one one more statement for law of conservation of energy is the internal energy of the body or total energy of the body which should be equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy by adding this value the body comes to the equilibrium position that is the another statement of law of conservation of the energy please keep in mind and the second one simple harmonic motion what is simple harmonic motion means by giving it produces the consistent sinusoidal waves okay that sinusoidal waves can be expressed by using the equation small x is equal to capital x into sin into omega t instead of theta i just replace the term is called omega t because of natural frequency okay and third one is nothing but d alamberts principle d alamberts principle is nothing but by adding the external force and by adding the inertia force it should be equal to be zero that is what we called d alamberts principle it can be used only in the case of dynamically equilibrium condition of the given system and the last one hooke's law it is the base of all hooke's law is nothing but you know that f is equal to k into x that equation is framed by hooke's law the amount of force is depends upon the spring expansion or spring displacement or spring stiffness okay that is the law is framed by hooke's law f is equal to k into x so what are the three different methods to determine the natural frequency is number 1 is nothing but newton's method number 2 is energy method number 3 is rayleigh's method here we have to know how to derive in step by step first one you have to use the de alamberts principle in case if the body is in motion and second case you can consider the conservation of the energy in case of the body doesn't have any motion and in third case suppose if you consider that one that disturbed should be equal to be restored that disturbed should be equal to be restored after that for last step you find about the natural frequency okay let me see one by one so that terms used in to calculate the frequency of the vibration is nothing but spring force is equal to f of s is equal to k into x as per the hooke's law weight of the ball w is equal to mass into gravity disturbed force f is equal to m into a according to newton's second law here k is nothing but spring constant it is otherwise said to be as a stiffness of the spring and its unit is newton per meter and uh, f of s is nothing but spring force small f is uh, sorry only f is called is nothing but externally applying force and m is called the mass of the body w is nothing but weight of the body its unit is in newton x is nothing but the deflection due to the mass get displaced from its equilibrium position and del is nothing but additional deflection takes place by giving external force 
here before you enter into this derivation what are the terms that you have to keep in mind again this is the second time that i'm going to recalling you natural frequency is nothing but frequency of free vibration so the natural frequency means what does it mean it is nothing but it is the frequency of free vibration and the equation of motion is nothing but sorry equation of simple harmonic motion x is equal to capital x into sin omega t d along with principle is equal to external force plus inertia force which will be equal to zero newton second law is nothing but f is equal to m into a inertia force is simply opposite direction to the given accelerating force hence i can mention like minus of accelerating force okay now the first method you're going to see is equilibrium method that so the name itself gives the details it is an equilibrium condition but it doesn't mention whether it is in static or dynamic since the vibration is nothing but there is some whenever the motion can be predicted in terms of frequency means that body is said to be as a vibration hence let us consider the spring without mass and the spring with mass this is called unstretched portion this is called a stretched portion so by adding mass the deflection takes place this is what we call del so therefore the mass due to the weight is equal to w is equal to m into g the spring again returns to the original position after giving the initial force to the mass is nothing but s into del s is nothing but stiffness you should keep in mind here i have used two symbol for the same title for stiffness i can mention in some like k in someone like s please kindly don't confuse those two things both are same okay s into del and m into g okay the above equation is nothing but here the amount of weight which will be equal to the amount of spring force the amount of weight force is equal to the amount of spring force that is mg is equal to s into del now you consider this one here due to the mass the spring is expanded now i am going to give additionally by giving externally applying force hence f is equal to m into d square x by dt square so here in this diagram you have seen without giving external force due to the weight and second one due to the spring force restored but in this case you are just going to compare this one it makes the additional deflection is called x okay so by adding the previous deflection value plus present deflection value is nothing but x plus del okay so due to that by applying the externally applying force it experiences the inertia force in opposite direction and this spring force is nothing but s plus or s into x plus del it can be converted now the spring or restoring force is equal to w minus so the opposite w minus it can be opposite in to this direction therefore w minus s into del plus x by substituting these all values you will get the value of sx is nothing but spring force or restoring force so by applying the principle so sx is is equal to m into sorry sx plus m into d square x by dt square is equal to 0 as per d along with principle in sometimes it can be called it as an the natural frequency of free longitudinal vibration but you should keep one thing in mind instead of acceleration d square x by dt square i can replace the letter like small x double dot in case if i going to refer the velocity means x single dot okay that is the term that you, that i have used frequently in the upcoming derivations okay next one here according to the kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy is nothing but f is equal to half into mv square so the kinetic energy takes place only in the terms of motion wherever the motion takes place for that case we have seen the kinetic energy 
wherever the motion doesn't take place the potential energy will be maximum in that case if the body doesn't have any motion means that that is what we called kinetic or potential energy okay here now we're going to see the second method is nothing but energy method so the name itself give the details the energy method which can deal about potential and the kinetic energy so how can we compare this potential and the kinetic energy for the given diagram means let me see so in this diagram first of all the spring is without mass and the second diagram is spring is with mass the spring without mass means the spring stiffness is very high hence it can be it can be recorded or the spring forces is nothing but having simple strain energy or otherwise said to be as an high potential energy but in, in case of second diagram the spring can be expanded or the spring can be stretched hence the potential energy of the spring is converted into kinetic energy of the spring but according to the static equilibrium condition that potential energy should be equal to the kinetic energy suppose what if not gets equal it means it causes the vibration okay so that is what here refer potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to constant this is the law of conservation of the energy so by taking the differentiation of this one which it becomes the constant becomes zero and v can be here i already said v can be represented is x dot a can be represented as x double dot potential energy is equal to half into k x square kinetic energy is equal to half into m v square so by taking the differentiation you will get the value of m x double dot x double dot refers to the acceleration k is refers to the is nothing but stiffness x is nothing but it can be referred as a displacement so therefore m x double dot is nothing but externally applying force or otherwise kinetic energy due to the kinetic energy the m into x double dot is produced due to the potential energy the spring can retain its portion is called k into x okay hence the system is said to be as and balanced now the third method is called rayleigh's method the rayleigh's method here it also uses the same principle of law of conservation of the energy but instead of the sum of potential energy kinetic energy is equal to constant i just assume this is the mean portion which means the ball is at in rest position for the main portion let us assume it having the high kinetic energy for the extreme portion let us assume it having the high potential energy you have to keep one thing in mind when the potential energy is maximum for that case kinetic energy is very zero or less when the kinetic energy is maximum for that case the potential energy is very zero or less okay in the rayleigh method portion you have to keep two things in mind number one first at main portion is high kinetic energy at datum portion is high potential energy okay by equating the equation due to the both cases both the energies are in maximum condition the motion of the vibration takes place like simple harmonic motion simple harmonic motion means the cycle traced by the vibration both the positive and the negative cycle the displacement value of the cycle will be remain same it doesn't gets degraded or doesn't gets accelerated okay hence the motion is called simple harmonic motion it can be represented by using the symbol x is equal to capital x into sin omega t Therefore, x is nothing but maximum displacement from the main portion. Just a minute. So now we are going to differentiate the given simple harmonic equation. We know that x is equal to x into sine omega t. By differentiating this one, the omega n will comes in the front portion. That sine can be 
converted into cos into omega n into t. So at the mean position t is 0 therefore we know that cos 0 is equal to 1 hence the x dot it can be equal to capital X into omega n. According to the Rayleigh method the potential energy at the extreme portion which will be equal to the kinetic energy at the mean portion. We know the potential energy formula half into kx square into half into mv square. So by equating this equation you will get the value of omega n that is nothing but natural circular frequency is equal to root of s by m. Here s refers to stiffness, m refers to mass of the suspension. Now, let me come to the conclusion. Here in this session, we have seen about the three methods called energy method, Newton's method and Rayleigh's method to determine the natural frequency. So, Newton's method means it can be used with the D. Alambert's principle, which means the D. Alambert's principle is nothing but summation of external plus inertia forces is equal to zero. And in case of energy method, I can use the law of conservation of energy, potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to constant. And in case of Rayleigh's method, the same law of conservation of energy is used. Instead, I just consider as an maximum potential energy which will be equal to maximum kinetic energy. Okay, that is uh, that is all about to calculate the natural frequency of vibration. So, okay, let me see some basics uh, about where the law of conservation of energy and where the Diagonal's principle actually came it at, uh, came it from. Now, the vibration can be determined by using two methods. Is called free body, and number two is law of conservation of energy. Free body diagram, the for any kind of modeling system. Since you have seen the vibration system is in terms of spring along with the mass that you have seen. For any kind of mathematical modeling or free body diagram, you can be analyzed by using these two principles is called D. Alambert's number two is Newton's second law. In case if you consider the datum portion means it can be based upon law of conservation of energy. For that case, the energy method and Rayleigh's method has been found out. So, uh, it is a very basic kinetic energy is nothing but the kin amount of kinetic energy of the mass is depends upon the amount of force given to displaced. Okay. So, the amount of mass displacement or the amount of force can be applied. It is what we call kinetic energy. So, we know the formula kinetic energy is equal to half into mv square but we don't know how it comes from. Here, if you go into plot, whenever the force is increased, the displacement traveled by the spring body is also increased. If you go into plot the diagram, it comes like right angle triangle. We know the formula of right angle triangles is equal to half into width into height. Instead of width, I just replace as an x or I just replace as an f or m. And instead of height, I can replace as an F. F is nothing but M into A. Instead of A, I can replace as dV by dt. Therefore, by plotting the graph, I will get the value of, of mv square. The next diagram that you have seen is potential energy. Potential energy is nothing but the body experienced by its own position. That is what we call the in. If you are going to define the potential energy, means by virtue of its position, which means based upon the datum portion the potential energy is varied that is what it can be clearly stated in the potential energy statement okay when the height of the datum is increased and as well as the potential energy also is considered to be increased so by using the right angle formula that due to the huge displacement taken upon with respect to height half into kx square that you got is nothing but stiffness of the spring or stiffness or strain energy into x is nothing but displacement okay hope you guys know about all the basics and the topics related to the energy methods and uh, what are the methods to determine the natural frequencies okay let me meet in next session thank you so much